Namaste. Welcome to the lecture series on the subject Applied Thermodynamics. This is module 3, Paper Power Cycles. This is lecture number 6. Myself, Dr. N. Satish Kumar, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Kendra Engineering College, Bantwal. So in this lecture, so and uh, the further three lectures, uh, I will be solving few numericals on uh, vapor power cycle. So let us solve this first problem. Dry saturated steam at 17.5 bar enters the turbine of a steam power plant and expands to the condenser pressure of 0.75 bar. Determine the Carnot and Rankine cycle efficiencies. Also find the work ratio of the Rankine cycle. So very simple problem. Uh, steam enters the turbine at 17.5 bar. Uh, expands in the turbine to the condenser pressure of 0.75 bar. You would find out the Carnot efficiency and the Rankine cycle efficiency. Also you would find out the work ratio. So here turbine pressure P1 is 17.5 bar and the condenser pressure P2 is 0.75 bar. So now you have to use the steam table uh, to get the properties of the steam at 17.5 bar, 17 bar and 0.75 bar. Now this is the property table, right? So you don't have the value of 17.5. Instead you have the pressure 17 and 18 and you have the saturation temperature enthalpy of the saturated liquid. Uh, this is the HFG latent heat and this is the enthalpy of the saturated vapor. This is the saturated liquid. This is saturated vapor. This is during phase change. Entropy of the saturated liquid entropy during evaporation then this is the entropy of the saturated vapor. So what you can do is uh, since 17 bar pressure and 18 bar pressure are given so you can take the average of the any value or to get the value at 17.5 bar. So using linear interpolation so here linear interpolation is not required directly you can take the average so Ts of means 204.3 plus 207.11 so that you have to convert into uh, that is celsius actually so you have to convert into kelvin so you will get it as 478.71 kelvin similarly hf is the average of these two values hfg is the average of these two values if hg is also average of these two values then similarly scf scfg and sg now the question is what if it is 17.6 or 17.78 something like that or 17.43 so then you have to go for the interpolation okay now uh, simple uh, first you have to solve for the Carnot cycle so point number one is always on the saturated liquid line so h1 is equal to hf and h2 is hg Right? and S1 is equal to SF and S2 is also equal to SG. This is for the Carnot cycle. You can see H1, so it is HF and H2 is nothing but HG. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is the Carnot cycle. So I will be solving first for the Carnot cycle. Right? Uh, so S1 is equal to SF because that is a saturated liquid line. S2 is equal to HG, saturated vapor point. Now similarly let us find out the value at 0.75 bar. So once again 0.75 is not available. You have the data at 0.8 and 0.7. So once again using linear interpolation. So you can find out Ts, Hf, Hfg, Hg, Sf, Sfg and Sg. So previously what you found out is uh, the previous slide that is uh, point number 1 and 2. So that is corresponding to the boiler pressure. Can you see here? 17.5 bar. Now I am going to find out the values at 4 and 3. So that is why 
I took the values at 0.75 bar. So here, in case of boiler pressure, since one is on saturated liquid line and two is on saturated vapor line, so H1 is equal to HF and H2 is equal to HG. Similarly, S1 is equal to SF and S2 is equal to SG. But 0.3 and 4, it's not like that because they are in the wet region. So here you have to find out the dryness fraction of the steam at 0.3 and at 0.4. Okay. Now, as all of you know, uh, to find out the Carnot cycle efficiency, it's not a big deal because Carnot cycle efficiency eta C is equal to T1 minus T2 by T1. Since you have know the temperature, saturation temperatures at uh, boiler pressure and as well as at the condenser pressure, so you can substitute that and you'll get the efficiency as uh, 0.2381 or 23.81 percent. And steam rate, that is specific steam consumption is nothing but 1 by W net. So that is 1 by WT minus WP. Now here to find out this WT and WP since 2 to 3 uh, is an expansion in the turbine whereas uh, 4 to 1 is a compression. So first we have to find out the X3. For that you have to use the isentropic process 2 to 3 because it's an expansion process isentropic 2 to 3. S2 is equal to S3. So S2 is nothing but SG from the previous slide but S3 since it is in the uh, since it is a wet steam in the two phase region so S3 is nothing but SF3 plus X3 SFG3 now SF3 and SFG3 so they are corresponding to 0.75 bar so from the previous slide you have to take what is the SF and SFG value at 0.75 that is 1.2126 SF value and SFG value corresponding to 0.75 bar is 6.2453. This is at the boiler pressure, S2 is equal to SG. Okay, 6.3855. After simplification, you will get the dryness fraction of the steam at 0.3 is 0.828. Once you find out the dryness fraction at 0.3, so you can find out the enthalpy at 0.3 as H3 is equal to HF3 plus X3 HFG3 since it is in the two phase region. So substituting now HF3 this value is once again at 0.75 bar and this HFG is also at 0.75 bar you have to take. Both have to be taken at the condenser pressure and you can find that the H3 value is 2271.63 kilojoules per kg. Once you find out H2 and H3 so turbine work or expansion work or positive work you can find out which is nothing but H2 minus H3 and you will get after substitution and simplification get it as 522.47 kilojoules per kg. Now again you have to find out X4 right. So S4 is equal to S1 can you see here 1 4 to 1 is isentropy compression so S1 is equal to S4 or S4 is equal to S1 but S1 is nothing but SF1 at boiler pressure of 17.5 bar so which is nothing but 2.3844 so 2.3844 nothing but is equal to S4 so S4 is nothing but SF4 plus X4 SFG4 being the 0.4 in the two phase region and uh, this SFG4 value you see look at the 0.4 here so this is in the condenser line 0.75 bar line so this SFG4 should be taken at the condenser pressure. Try to understand this. So look at the point. So according to that point, you have to take the value of SF and SFG, similarly HF and HFG. So after simplification, you can find the X4 value as 0.188. Once you find out the X4 value, so use this formula to find out the enthalpy at 0.4. H4 is equal to HF4 plus X4, HFG4 being the point in the two phase region. Now here all these values that is HF4 is HF at condenser pressure and this is HFG at condenser pressure of 0.75 bar. Try to understand this, this is very very important and you will get the value of H4 as 811.79 kilojoules per kg. Now coming to the compression work so it is H1 minus H4 right so you just now you found out H1 and H4 so you substitute and you get the pump work as 
uh, 66.36 kilojoules per kg. Okay, I use the word compressor, but it's pump work. Okay, because compression is taking place by means of a pump. Now, specific steam consumption is uh, now calculated as 1 minus W net. So, it is WT minus WP. So, it comes around 2.192 into 10 to the power 9, minus 3 kg per kilo joules. Now, work ratio is nothing but net work output of the cycle divided by turbine work. So, that is uh, phi of uh, delta W divided by positive work. So, net work output is WT minus WP and positive uh, turbine work is WT. And after substitution and simplification, you get the work ratio as 0 0.873. Now, coming to the efficiency of the Rankine cycle. So, you can see the TS and HS diagram for the Rankine cycle. So, this HS diagram is nothing but the Moller chart. So, if you use Moller chart, so it is better to draw this diagram and you can find out few of the enthalpy values directly from the Moller chart, which I will tell you at the end. Now, this is the TS diagram. So, 0.4 is the entry point to the pump and 4 to 1 is the isentropy compression in the pump and 1 to 2 is the heat addition in the boiler and 2 to 3s is the expansion in the turbine and 4, uh, 3 to 4, uh, 2 to 3s is the expansion in the turbine, 3s to 4 is the condensation. Now, Rankine cycle efficiency uh, is a general formula W net by Q in. So, W net is nothing but WT minus WP and Q in is nothing but QH. Now, you can see W turbine. So, 2 to 3 is the expansion, isentropy expansion in the turbine. So, it is H2 minus H3. Your S suffix indicates it is isentropic process, but you can use H3 in the formula. Similarly, pump work is nothing but H1 minus H4 and heat input is during the boiling process or in the boiler uh, during the heating process 1 to 2. So, it is H2 minus H1. Since the change in volume of the saturated liquid water during compression from state 2, 4 to state 1 is very small, so V4 may be taken as constant. So, in a steady flow process, work is equal to uh, minus integration of dp. So, pump work is nothing but h1 s minus h4 or vf at pressure p2 into boiler pressure minus condenser pressure. So, here you see uh, if you look into that diagram, okay, if you recall that previous di diagram, right. So, this is 4 this is 1s okay and this is uh, 2 and this is 3s i'm just uh, drawing the points only okay of the ts di diagram so 4 to 1 is pump work so it is enthalpy at 1 minus enthalpy at 4 so h1 minus h4 you can write or h1 s minus h4 also you can write and also this is also equal to you see this is a condenser pressure 3 to 4 is pc condenser pressure and 1 to 2 is nothing but boiler pressure pb Try to understand this. So, it is specific volume at entry point into the pump that is at pressure PC or P2 or PC actually it is. Uh, okay, it is PC I can make it and into boiler pressure minus condenser pressure. So, already you noted at condenser pressure Vf is equal to 0 0.001037 and boiler pressure is 17.5 and condenser pressure is 0.75. Since it is, it is bar, it should be multiplied by 10 to the power 5 to convert that into Pascal and divide it by 1000 to convert into kilojoules. Or directly you can multiply 10 to the power 2. Instead of multiplying 10 to the power 5 and divided by 1000, directly if the pressure is in bar, if you multiply by 10 to the power 2, so then also you will get the uh, answer in kilojoules per kg. So this is nothing but the pump work. Now using pump work, which is nothing but H1S minus H4, so, H4 is uh, already you know because it is a, a saturated uh, liquid enthalpy at condenser pressure. So, you can find out H1S as pump work plus uh, H4. So, you will get it as 385.99 kilojoules per kg. Now, turbine work is nothing but H2 minus H3. So, already you calculated those two values. So, it is 522.47 kilojoules per kg and heat input is nothing but H2 minus H1S. So, you will get as 2408.11 kilojoules per kg. 
So if you substitute in the formula for the Rankine cycle efficiency, you get to get the Rankine cycle efficiency as 0.2162 or 21.62 percentage. And similarly, specific steam consumption for Rankine cycle is uh, 1 divided by 522.47 minus 1.4737. So you'll get as uh, uh, this as the answer. Now work ratio is nothing but net work output for the cycle divided by turbine work. So for rank and cycle, so work ratio will be 0.9967. Now suppose if in the problem one, that is a turbine and pump uh, have each is 85 percent of efficiency, find the reduction in the net work and cycle efficiency for rank and cycle. Okay, now uh, I told you that I'll uh, explain you how to go into the Moller chart. So I'll do at the end of this part. Now suppose if the Rankine uh, for the Rankine cycle, if turbine efficiency and pump efficiencies are given, so you know the effect of irreversibility and what is the it leads to. So pump work input increases because of irreversibility, whereas turbine work output decreases. So if the pump efficiency is given as 0.85 and turbine efficiency is 0.85, so pump work in should increase, actual pump work. So it is previous pump work, which is isentropy pump work, divided by efficiency how to do, so that it increases from 1.737 to, that is isentropy work, to actual work of 2.0435 kilojoules per kg. So you have to divide isentropic work divided by pump efficiency that gives the actual pump work output. Whereas for the turbine, the efficiency decreases, right? Because of irreversibility, the actual work output decreases for the turbine. So it is a uh, turbine, actual turbine work output is nothing but efficiency of the turbine into isentropic work, which you calculated in the previous slide. So it is comes around 444.09 kilojoules per kg and W net becomes WT minus WP 444.06 kilojoules per kg. And percentage reduction in work output becomes 15.11 percent. So previously, when the isentropic expansion and compression were taking place, so the net work output was 520.73. Now it is reduced to 442.06 because of irreversibilities in the compressor and the turbine. So you'll get the uh, efficiency uh, percentage reduction in work output as 15.11 percent. Now. Pump work, as you know, is WP is nothing but H1S minus H4, or H1S is nothing but uh, the pump work plus uh, H4. So it is uh, 386.29, and uh, QH is H2 minus H1S, so it is 2407.81 kilojoules per kg. So cycle efficiency now in this case, so it is 18.36 percentage. So previously, rank and cycle efficiency that is when there is no irreversibility, you got it as 21.62%. Now, because of irreversibility, uh, the efficiency reduces to 18.36%. So, percentage reduction in cycle efficiency is 15.08%. Now, as I told earlier, the alternative method for problem 1 is using HS diagram or the Moller chart, though the result may not be as accurate as that of the analytical solution. Uh, this is one thing. So you may, you can go through the Moller chart, you can solve, so nothing is wrong. But here, when you take the reading from the Moller chart, so sometimes the point may not be exactly on a line or a curve. So then you have to approximately you have to take the enthalpy or the other values. So in that case, there may be some error. So that is why the result may not be as accurate as the analytical solution. So now how to use a Moller chart? So here, only the saturated vapor, or sorry, vapor region, you can find out the enthalpy values. Now, since steam is dry saturated at state 2 for Rankine cycle, right? So Rankine cycle, you have the dome like this, right? So this is a TS diagram. So here is a compression pump. Okay, then it goes like this. Then it goes like this here. Okay. So this is for this is 1s, this is 2, so this is 3. So here the steam is dry saturated at state point 2. So this is dry saturated steam. So locate this point 
or liquid the state at the pressure of P2 is equal to 17.5 bar. You see, here in the Mollier chart, all these lines, you see these lines, you see these lines, you see the thick lines which I mark here, you see. So, they are the constant pressure lines. So, you have to search for the 17.5 bar and there is a saturation line, you see this line, thick line, you see, you can see here. Right, x is equal to one line. Here x may be equal to one. It may be written. They check that value. So this is called as saturation line. So 17.5 bar. So I can't uh, find which is 17.5 bar. So roughly I will take that this is 17.5 bar line, and this is the intersection point of the that with the uh, saturation line. So at this point, come horizontally. Okay, I'm using rough now. I don't know whether it is 17.5 or not. So this is the enthalpy at state two. So directly this will give the value of enthalpy at point 2 that is h2 value now uh, to find out h3 so 2 to 3 is isentropy process so this is 17.5 bar you see this is what a pressure at the boiler boiler pressure is 17.5 bar and 2 is the boiler exit so that is why i marked it point 2 on at 17.5 bar line intersecting with the saturation line now 2 to 3 is the expansion in the turbine it's isentropic so at the end of that the pressure is condenser pressure which is 0.75 bar. So this is 0.75. So what you would do is, since the, uh, this is HS diagram, so entropy is vertical line. So come down till it intersects 0.75. So let me take this as 0.75, just for example. So, okay, this pressure line is 0.75 bar. So 0.75 bar and the vertical line from 2 intersects at this point. Okay, let me use different color to highlight that at this point. Okay. So this is a 0.75 bar line and this is a vertical line. So they are intersecting. So corresponding enthalpy, if you note down, so that is the value of H3. Okay. And to find out H4, okay, here I think it, 4 should be here. So it's a mistake. And 1 is here. 1S yes is here. So it, this should be drawn like this. Okay. Small correction here. Okay. Uh, so H4 value you cannot get from the Moller chart. So H4 and H1S. Uh, you have to do it with analytical method only. So that is what for vapor side or to, towards the turbine side. So you can use the Moller chart to find out the enthalpies. Okay, this is the explanation. So this is the just explanation. As the expansion process two to three is isentropic, draw a vertical line through the state point two to meet the pressure line P is equal to 0.75 bar. That is what I shown in the previous slide. The intersection of the vertical line with the pressure line will fix the state three. So from the chart, find out the value of H3. Not only H3, uh, you can find out the X3 also. So that is from uh, 17.5 bar. Suppose if I take this as a 17.5 bar line, this line. Okay, it's saturation line is intersecting here. So if I come down to 0.75 bar, if I take this as a 0.75 bar line. So this is the point here. Okay, if I go along this, this is H3. And from this saturation line intersection is H2. Now here, you see these are the dryness fraction lines. You see one line here, one line here, one line here, one line here. This is the saturation. Here x is equal to 1. So this is maybe 0 0.95. So here it might be written here 0 0.95, 0 0.90, 0 0.85, 0 0.80. Now check out which dryness fraction. So in between there are 5 divisions. 0 0.81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Again 86, 87, up to 90. So 91 up to 0.95 like that. So which line passes through this point? You have to find out. Sometimes exactly one line may not be passing, or it will be maybe between two lines. So then you have to approximately take the dryness fraction. Okay. The value of H4 can be found out from the steam tables. So that is what I told you. Uh, at 0.75 bar, H4 is equal to HF4. And using that, you have to find out. Uh, H1 also. Okay, and later you can find out the rank and cycle efficiency and the steam uh, specific steam consumption rate. So this is how. Uh, so just I solved one problem, uh, where any basic problem on vapor power cycle is solved, uh, which works on Carnot cycle as well as the rank and cycle. But rank and cycle, I considered the reversibility as well uh, with the isentropic efficiency of the turbine and compressor. Then I have shown you how to take the enthalpy values. Uh, using modular chat. So with this I conclude this lecture number 6 uh, and I will solve uh, more problems in the coming lecture series. Okay. Thank you.